Parshas Veschanan. This week's Parsha contains a verse that on its face seems to be a non-sequitur. The logic doesn't seem to present itself. Let's look at it. This is Perik Dalid, Pasuk Tesvav. That's 4.15 in Devar. It reads as follows. V'nishmartem ma'od lenapsho seichem. You should be very careful to protect your nefesh. Nefesh sometimes is translated as a soul, or it could be your life. It could also be your desire. We'll talk about that. Let's use soul for now. Be careful to protect your soul. Key, key means because. So now here's why. Why? Lo re'isem kol t'muna. You saw no form, no image. Biyom diber Hashem aleichem b'chorev mitocha eish. On the day that Hashem spoke to you at Chorev, out of the midst of the fire. Chorev being another name for Mount Sinai, for Har Sinai. So what exactly is this saying and what does it mean? Watch out. Watch out for your life. Watch out for your soul. Because. Why? Because you didn't see any picture when God gave the Torah, when you heard his voice from amidst the fire. What is that supposed to mean? Well, let's look at the context. This is uh, verse 15, this Pasuk uh, Tesvav. Let's talk about from Pasuk Tes, which is 9. Nine reads as follows, Pasuk text. Raki Shamalcha, very similar phrasing, be careful. Ushmor Nafshachamaod, and watch your soul or your life um, greatly, exceedingly, a lot. Pentishkacha said the Vorim Asher Ra'uleinacha, lest you forget the things that you saw with your eyes. Pen Yasuru Milvavcha Kalimechayacha, and uh, lest depart from your mind all the days of your life, meaning the experience at Mount Sinai. That's what the. the Torah has been discussing, Moshe Rabbeinu has been discussing, and uh, in a few more verses, we will actually get a recapitulation of the Ten Commandments in uh, this Parsha. It's the second time that the Ten Commandments appears, with slight variations, the first time being in Parsha Sisra, which is in Shemos. So um, <clears throat> be careful, preserve the memory, don't forget it, pass it on to your children and your grandchildren. What is what is it that you're passing on? Yom HaSher HaShem El The day that you stood before the Lord your God, at Chorev, which is Mount Sinai, as Hashem said to me, this is Moshe speaking, gather the people together, and I will let them hear my words. So that they will learn to fear me all the days that they're on this world, they and their children will learn. Now around 11. And you came close and you stood at the foot of the mountain. It's quite a sight. The, the, the mountain was uh, aflame. Um, and there was darkness and at the same time and uh, a murky fog. And Hashem, this is 12, your base, Hashem spoke to you from the fire. You heard his voice called Devarim Atem Shomim Usmuna and an image, a picture you didn't see it. You only heard a voice. And he told you his covenant, what to do, the ten things, the ten commandments. And he wrote them on two stones. So we're, we have a description here of Revelation on Mount Sinai. It was a sound and light show, but no picture. This is now the second time. It's actually the first time in our, our, our verses, the second time. And Hashem commanded me to teach you the laws, to do them in the land that you are coming to inherit. And now our verse, And be very careful about your souls. Because you didn't see any picture. On the day that Hashem spoke to you from amidst the mountain. This is a description of revelation, of a powerful revelation, so powerful in fact, that the children of Israel asked Moshe, Daber They said, you speak to us. Because it was so overwhelming. They said, if God speaks to us, we're just going to die. It was so overwhelming. The presence of God was so intense. It was, they felt it to their core, and they, they were afraid of overexposure, that it would completely wipe them out. What is going on? What is this? Watch your souls, because you didn't see a picture. You didn't see a picture. Okay, you didn't see a picture. What's this? Watch your souls. So Rav Shem Shonfalaher says that there is <clears throat> a uh, there's some people who can only accept God 
if they sense him with their senses. They actually see him. There is a, a school of uh, philosophy called logical positivism in which they say the only uh, empirically proven phenomenon can be accepted. And how do you empirically prove God? How do you point to God? How do you, how do you uh, see, see God? There is, a, we have recordings of powerful impact, like the one that the Torah just described. We have a recording of after the children of Israel left Egypt, they said, this is my God and I will glorify him. But there was no image. In fact, the Torah is, emphasizes over and over again, don't make graven images. It follows in these verses. Time doesn't permit to cite them all. But no images of God. None. On the other hand, how do you point to God's existence? Well, we know that in our national consciousness, this was so overwhelmingly manifest, that this being God's presence, the existence of God, was so manifest that it was overpowering to the children of Israel. And Rav Hirsch says, there is another existence that is that we feel that we know with certainty exists, and yet we can't point to it, and we don't even know where it is. We know it exists, and we don't know where it is. And that is human consciousness. That is the nefesh hamaskelas. That is the, the soul, if you will, or the consciousness, which ties into ratzon, ties into desire. The self-awareness that we have, that each of us carries with us. Where is it? It's the soul in the machine. It, be it has bedeviled philosophers for hundreds, or more accurately, thousands of years. Uh, how do we... How do we, where is our consciousness? Well, um, look at Popular Mechanics, uh, the June 21st issue of this year, 2000, recording this uh, in 2024. The title of the article is Human Consciousness is an Illusion. Looks like the problem persists. If you say that only that which I can sense, I can measure, I can point to, I can see exists, then if I can't see it, it doesn't exist. I can't see human consciousness. We have this, there are various streams in philosophy. The one of them I, I quoted was logical positivism. There's also materialism. There's also mechanistic uh, determinism, which says we don't even have free choice. I can't say, even though I'm saying in three seconds, I will lift my finger, one, two, three. I really didn't choose to do that, but rather it's simply a response to billions of stimuli that created an inevitable result. Well, this sounds a little wacky. I studied it when I was in undergrad. It sounded to me wacky then. It sounds to me wacky now. Listen to this opinion that's recorded in this article of Scientific American. Consciousness, this is by Dr. Keith Frankish, who's a professor of philosophy at the University of Sheffield. Consciousness doesn't exist, and we only think it does because we are under a sort of illusion about our own minds. The statement itself appears to be, putting it gently, ironic, uh, probably more accurately, ludicrous. We only think consciousness exists. What's this thinking? Where does that come from? So if you are tortured by this rule that only that which you can empirically point to, then you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a problem. You're going to deny your own consciousness, which is ludicrous. And you'll deny the existence of God. Well, there's another option, which is Rather than denying an incorporeal God, a God which has no body, a God which has no physical presence, let's give him a physical presence, and then we can accept him. And that might well be the basis of Avodah Zarah, of idol worship. We concretize the concept of God. We put God into, we being the humans who do this, put God into a, into a, a, a material form, make him a golden calf, Make him a totem pole. Make him anything. That's your God. Make it the sun. Make it the moon. It's something that we can see. And what the Torah says over and over and over again is, you cannot see God, and God is as real as it gets. God is more real than anything else. Ain od milvado. And we need to live in this world where we operate on a daily basis in the natural world on the basis of empirically observable things. And yet, that which is most real is God not observable. And Rob Hirsch says, another thing which influences our life profoundly, which in a way is our life, is our consciousness, which is not observable, and yet we know with certainty, except for a few philosophers who haven't figured it out yet, that our consciousness exists. We know that when we feel pain, we know we're feeling pain. When we feel happiness, we know we're feeling happiness. 
when we think about things, we know we're thinking. And similarly, we know God exists. And what this verse is saying is, watch out for that. Watch out for your soul. You didn't see a picture. You didn't see a form of God. God has no physical form. It doesn't mean that he doesn't exist. He's as real as your own consciousness is real. And we are very aware, sometimes very painfully aware of our consciousness. He's even more real than that because he created us and he created our consciousness. Have a good Shabbos.